this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We thank God for his goodness and mercy on tonight. Amen. For all that he's done for us. Amen. We welcome those that have been joining by Facebook, later by YouTube, Lord's House of Prayer, Sincere Milk of the Word, Friday night. Amen. Bible study, prayer and Bible study. Amen. Just a reminder that we are here from 6, from 7 to 8 in prayer. Amen. You can join us right there from, the, from home in prayer. Amen. And then from 8 to 9. Amen. The word reminds us that wherefore leaving things inside all malice and all guile and all hypocrisies and all envies and all evil speakings. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Amen. And so we thank God that we have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Amen. And we thank him for his grace, his mercy, for his truth, for all things in Jesus Christ. Amen. Hope everyone had a nice Thanksgiving. Amen. And we're going to be reading for an opening scripture on tonight, Psalms 15. Psalms 15. Amen. Praise the Lord. It says, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that, hath, he that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is content, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own hurt and changes not, he that putteth not out his money to use it, nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doth these things shall never be moved. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearers, and the doers of his holy word on tonight. Amen. Tonight we're going to start a study in John chapter 6. Amen. We may not get all the way through it. But we're going to start it. Amen. John chapter 6. Amen. John chapter 6, verse 1, it said, After these things, Jesus went over the sea of Galilee, which is the sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. I want us to take note there. They followed him because they saw his miracles. And that's why I believe the gifts are important. One of the reasons, because as people see the gifts in operation, it causes them to come and hear the word, amen. Now, and, and all that Jesus did, all the miracles, all the signs and the wonders, it was to bring the people to what? A knowledge of God. It wasn't that people would focus on the miracles and the signs and the wonders, but that they would be attracted by the signs and by the miracles. And that's why we're asking God here to show forth his glory in this place amongst us. Amen. Because the most important thing is that people turn aside and hear what God is saying in this hour. Amen. And as I was speaking, I was thinking about what happened with Moses. What got Moses' attention? He was in that wilderness. And he passed by with the sheep that morning. Amen. And they saw the bush burning, which was not unusual for that area because it was hot, humid, so bushfires were coming. 
But what got his attention is when he came back by, it was still burning. But it, it was not consumed. Amen. That's what got his attention. Amen. We want to be like the burning bushes. <laughs> Even though we're going through trials and tribulations and temptations, we're not consumed by it. People turn aside and see where what, what you function in here. <laughs> Amen. They want to know about your God. Amen. And, and even the Bible says that we offer signs and for wonders in the earth. Amen. And it's all about bringing people to a knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. So a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover feast of the Jews was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Amen. And that's how it is, God, in all that we go through. Some things God allowed to happen in our life, he's testing us. He already knows. But he's letting us see where we are. Amen. So that's what he was doing here. He was proving him because Jesus already knew what he was about to do. Look at verse 7. Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. And there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed it to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Amen. And so Jesus, he multiplied more than what was needed. Amen. And that's, that's a good thing for us to understand. Bible said he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that's working in us right now. Now look at verse 14. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, this is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. You see there again, the miracle calls them to what? Believe on the name of Jesus. Believe on Jesus. And that's what it was all about. Amen. One place when he, um, they came on a man that was, I believe he was blind from his youth, and the disciples asked him, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus said, neither this man nor his parents sin or it's not because of their sin that he was born blind but the reason he was born blind is so that the son of man might be glorified so that people would believe on him and through believing on him they believe on the father that's what it's all about amen and, and you know in the world today they make miracles really the end but a miracle a sign a wonder is just a means to an end amen what is the end? That people what? Believe on the name of Jesus Christ. Okay. But we're about to see that fully um, manifested here. Look at verse 15. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. Amen. Because Jesus knew who he was. Amen. And it wasn't time. Remember what I keep telling us? This is not the time for us to be what? Kings. 
He may. No, I, I asked a question. But that was a good. But it's not that we are both kings and priests. But the main function is as what? Well, priest interceding. Amen. And, and, and so even here with Jesus, they wanted to come and make him a king. Jesus already knew he was a king. But that, was, that wasn't the purpose he had come this time for. He said, I came to give my life a ransom for many. He came to die. He came as, as a lamb. The lamb of, what did John say? Behold the what? Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Amen. But the next time he comes, <laughs> he comes the king. He's coming as the lion of the tribe of Judah. And we coming with him. Now we lambs. <laughs> Amen. We priests. Amen. Now some that got it a little mixed up think they're kings. <laughs> huh? You see why it's so important that we study the word of God and get the true revelation of it? So that we'll know what we are supposed to be doing while we're waiting for him to come the second time. He told them to occupy to our till he come. So what are we to be doing? What is our occupation? Amen. Because he knew he was a king. But when they came to try to make him a king, he hid himself. Amen. And that's why we got to be careful when people try to exalt us above what we know the word of God said. We got to have that understanding who we are and what the purpose that we're here for. Amen. So that we don't get confused. Amen. I'm trying to follow Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm trying to do just what he did. Amen. And so let me read that again. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him. But you do a sign of wonder. Let me work. Let, let God through me work a miracle. And see what's going to See how people change the way they look at you. Let some blind eyes come open. Let some deaf ears come unstopped. Some land. people will look at you different and gonna want to give you praise that you might not be ain't supposed to be given. Amen. And 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 so understanding, as I always say, is half the battle. And so when we understand what we're supposed to be doing, what we doing is what we're supposed to be doing. When we come and we pray, we are we're first of all seeking to get who right? Ourselves. But we're seeking to put on our mask so that we can help somebody else. As we come into that place where we're supposed to be, we become that light. We become that salt. And then what people start following you as you follow who? Christ. Amen. And so um, they came, they, they were going to take him by force. They were just going to make him be. <laughs> But what did he say? To make him king, he departed again up into a mountain himself alone. Because he knew it wasn't what? It wasn't time. He, he already know the day is coming. That's why I'm teaching us here. Don't worry about being overlooked and all of that now. Keep doing what God. You know what? I, I Just even tonight, it was so heavy on me. You know, I kept hearing God say, he that is faithful in a little, he said, I'm going to make you ruler over us. But we have to be faithful where we are, what God has given us to do. Amen. Because if he can trust you to do the little bit, then he can trust you in that which is much. But if he can't trust you to be faithful in that which is little, and we have to look at it also, Sam, we're not trying to be faithful to men. We are being faithful to God. He's the one that called us. He's the one that saved us and gave us what we are supposed to be doing. Amen. Look at verse 16. And when evening was now come, his disciples went down into the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea towards Capernaum. And it was now dark and Jesus was not come to them. <laughs> Amen. I love this because I've experienced this. I've been through this. Because when I got out the, the um, uh, military, God told me to get out. Um, he said, get out. And then he told me what to do. But you know how sometimes God tells you to do something. 
and you expected, you know, a certain thing to happen, and it hasn't happened yet. It's, it's dark, and it seems like things is getting worse than getting better. And Jesus ain't came yet. Amen. And, and you can become discouraged that time, but don't be discouraged, because this is what he told me. He said, just because I haven't come yet, that don't mean I'm not coming. Huh? Amen. The old folks used to say it this way. He may not come when you want him, <laughs> but he's right on time. Whenever he gets there, he's on time. And you just have to position yourself in the word of God and just be determined. I'm going to wait until my, like Job said, he said, all my appointed time. He, he, what he was saying, I don't know how long I'm going to have to suffer. Amen. But all my appointed time, I'm going to wait. I know my change is coming. That's not even... But I got to learn how to wait until it comes. Because too many people, they throw up their hands and give up before the change comes. Amen. But he said, just because... Remember this now. When you're going through, it seems like he ain't came through for you. He said, just because I haven't come yet, that don't mean I'm not coming. So, but it was now dark and Jesus was not come to him. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rolled about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship. And they were afraid. As Anybody would have. You see the man walking on the water? Not just walking on the water, but he was walking on the water in the midst of a storm. The wind blowing him. Okay. Look, look what happened. Verse 20. But he said unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Amen. Then, then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whether they went. Now, why did he do that? He did it because the same reason he worked all the other miracles. That strengthened their what? Faith. That revealed who he was. And that's what we have to understand. Sometimes when we're going through things and whatnot, and he ain't came, and then all of a sudden he come in a miraculous mm -hmm. Just showing us what? Who he is. One place when he walked on the water, they said, what manner of man is this? No, that's when he calmed the storm. Amen. They say, what man of man is this? So he's constantly, remember this, he's constantly seeking to show himself who he is in our life. And that's why sometimes he does things the way he does them. Amen. But we just have to learn how to what? Wait on him. Okay, look at verse 22. You get to it. The day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save that one whereinto his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone, howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias, nigh unto the place where they did eat bread after the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum doing what? Seeking for Jesus. Because they had seen all that he had done. Amen. And so they were seeking. Because they had needs to be met. And I want us to see this because this is important, because the question becomes, why are you seeking Jesus? Why? Look what he says. Verse 25. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when came thou hither? And watch Jesus' response. See, because Jesus knows our hearts. He knows our thoughts are far off. Okay. It's a good thing that they were seeking him, but what he wanted to know is why. Look at verse 26. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were feed. 
So they were seeking, but not for the miracles. The miracles declared them that he was the, the son of God. But they were seeking him, how I want to put it, for the material things. See, like a lot of people today, they are seeking him, but for the wrong reason. And Jesus didn't chide him in, in a negative way, but he what, redirected him, refocused him, helped him to understand the reason that they should have been seeking him. Okay, it's good that you're seeking him, but why you seeking him is, is the problem. Amen. Some people come seeking, seeking for houses, come seeking for cars, come seeking for stuff. And the problem is, when you don't get it, you're going to get discouraged and what? And get the revelation. All of that's going to burn up, even if you do get it. I was just on my knees praying tonight, and the Lord just started reminding me how everything's going up in smoke. But what? The Word of God. That's the only thing that's going to last. Heaven and earth is going to pass away. But what did he say? My Word will never pass away. Amen. So look what he says here. Verse 26. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Now he's going to tell them why they need to seek him. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed or approved. Set his seal of approval on. How did he set his seal of approval on Jesus Christ? Let, let's look at that. Go, go to Hebrews. Um, Hebrews chapter 2. Him hath God the Father sealed. Hebrews chapter 2. Actually, let me see this before. Let me see. Is that the one? It's actually, I'm going to have to quote it because that's not the one I want. But, but just stay there anyway because I, I'm a, I'm, I'll tie this other one in there. Let's see. Because it talks about Jesus. He said he was a man approved of God through signs and wonders. But let's look at Hebrews. Um, let's start at verse, chapter 2, verse 1. It says, Therefore you ought to give a more earnest heed to the things which ye have heard. It said, Any time you let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received the just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing them, them um, the disciples, the apostles, witness, both with what? Signs and wonders, and divers miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. Okay, so that's how he approved the apostles, but that's also how he approved Jesus Christ by the signs and the wonders. Okay, so he said, um, 
go back to John 6 and 27, he says, labor not, labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto eternal everlasting life for the Son, that which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him of God the Father sealed or approved by signs and wonders and miracles that God did for through him. And we saw that in the opening of what we were discussing. Okay. Then let's look at one other scripture because I think this is this is important too. Go go to Proverbs chapter twenty-three, right quick. Proverbs chapter twenty-three. Okay, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 1. It says, When thou sittest to eat with the ruler, consider diligently what is before thee, and put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. Watch this. Be not desirous of his dainties, or his goodly things. You know, his Rolex watches, his diamond rings, his houses, all of that. He said, don't be desirous <laughs> of his dainties. Why? For they are deceitful meats, deceitful meats. Look what he said in verse 4. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Will thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings, they fly away as an eagle towards heaven. Okay. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Okay. And watch what happened. The morsel which thou hast eaten shall thou vomit up, and lose thy sweet verse. That is powerful when you understand. See, we got to be careful when we are, and I always teach this, what we are partaking of in the world. Because what is the devil after? He's after the word of God in us. Because he knows the power of God's word to keep us from sin. To, to make us wiser than him. See, the only way, the only true defense against a lie is the truth. But when you don't have the truth, then the lie can just reign as king. You ever believe the lie, and I mean really believe the lie, and you were really going on to, that that thing was true, only to find out that it was a lie? But because you believed it, you might have did some damage, made some wrong moves. See, that's what the devil wants us to do. <laughs> and that's why we have to be careful in the spirit, the knowledge that we are taking in. Because you don't want to lose your sweet words. This is our sweet words, this word of God here. So, okay, now go back to John. But I just wanted to tie those two together because that's Old Testament. But this is New Testament, but it's saying the same thing. Don't labor for the meat that perishes, but labor for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of God shall give unto you for him and God the Father sealed or approved. And you know the greatest approval that the Father gave to Jesus was when he raised him from the dead. That's the one thing, because the devil, he's done miracles, he's done signs, he's done wonders, lying wonders, but the one thing, all these other uh, prophets of these false gods, not one of them had raised from the dead. He is the only one that he has raised from the dead, and that is the greatest sign that God has given us, amen, that he is the Christ, the son of the living God, amen. And, and look at verse 28. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. You want to work the works of God? Believe the word of God. 
and, and do it. That's how we know we, we believe it, because we do it. The Lord spoke to me this morning when I was in my garage um, trying to get my ADT, my cameras fixed. And he said, um, you know the scripture says um, um, in Romans 8, 28, for we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And he spoke, he said, the only way they're going to work together for your good is you got to walk this thing out. Because as you walk it out, you start think, seeing things what? Work out. <laughs> for your good. For your good. But sometimes we expect the stuff to work out, but we ain't walking it out. We done got off track. And then we get mad at God. Okay. He said it works together for the good of them that love the Lord. And if we love the Lord, we're going to what? Keep his commandments. Got to get this understanding. Listen to what he said. Too many people done got off track. And they still think it's working out for their good, and it's not. It might appear to be. <laughs> but eventually, it's going to turn. But when you know you're obeying God, just keep walking it out. Now, look what he says, verse 30. They said, therefore, unto him, What sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What doth thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Now, what Jesus had just done, he just finished feeding what? The multitudes in the wilderness with two fish. And the Bible said it was two small fish. And no big <laughs> Two small fish and five loaves of bread. Okay. That was... Uh, reminiscent of what happened in the wilderness when the, he rained down down the manna from on high because he was setting them up for this message. <laughs> Letting them know I'm the one. See, you talking about what Moses fed you. You don't even know I am what Moses fed you. <laughs> See, that's what, but he was setting them up to help them to understand because we're between the New and the Old Testament. He's implementing the New. And so he's trying to bring the people from the shadow to the image. So we can understand where we're supposed to be, what we're supposed to be doing. So they said, we want to see you do a miracle like Moses. He gave us bread in the wilderness. Okay, Je Jesus had just gave them bread in the wilderness. <laughs> But he wanted to set him up for the spiritual truth behind it. Look what he said, 32. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from him, but my Father giveth you the true bread from him. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. He was setting them up. Helping them to understand, I am what that symbolized. I'm the true bread. I'm the word of God that came down into the world to give you life. That's why I put so much emphasis on what? The word. This is all about the word. The word is the one thing in the world that is priceless. You can't put a price on it. Amen. And that's why we got to get in it. Amen. And just like he gave them bread, how often? Daily. Every day, they had fresh manna. They didn't have to worry about no stale manna. They didn't have to worry about having no refrigerator, no, you know, to keep it fresh. They could depend on God as long as they were in that wilderness to give them fresh bread from heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And don't you know we can depend on God? But you know what our problem is? He gives it but we too lazy to get up and get it. <laughs> we don't see the value in it sometimes. The value in the word of God. And you know that when he gave them that bread in the morning, that manna came down in the morning. But they had to get on up and get it. Because if they, if they waited until lunchtime, it was gone. 
Mm. See, it didn't stay on the ground all day. Right. Amen. So they had to get up and get their daily bread. But God was faithful. Mm -hmm. Giving it to them. He's still faithful. Thank you, Amen. Amen. And the Lord was dealing with me. Uh, and I believe I'm going to start on the first of the month. This morning he was dealing with me. I'm, I'm still going to pray about it. But Leave. I'm going to start with, um, because you have, in Proverbs, you have 31 chapters. So you can do a chapter a day and go through it the whole month. So if the Lord leads me, I'm going to start in December. They're going through Proverbs. There's so much wisdom in Proverbs. Amen. Amen. And so I'm going to be, if, if the way I'm, so far I'm thinking I'm going to do it, because I'm up at 7 anyway, I'm going to go on uh, Facebook at 7 o'clock in the morning. And with our uh, wisdom for the day, that's what he gave me. Wisdom for the day. We're going to give that, that bread. Amen. Amen. We're going to get that bread early in the morning. Yes. Amen. And it's good to seek him in the morning. Yes. Amen. And then, then just stay focused the rest of the day. Amen. So, um, and I didn't know I was going to be teaching this on tonight, but I, he showed he gave me that this morning because he's line, realigning me. I know what he's doing in my life. He's getting me back to that place where I used to be. Amen. And, that, and I love it. Look what he says. So the Father gave the future of true bread, verse 33, for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Why? Because he's not just the bread of life, but he is the living water. Amen. If you go to, well, well let's look at it. Go, go to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We got to want this bread more than we want <laughs> all this other stuff that our flesh wants. Yeah, huh? Amen. Look what he said, verse 10. I mean, chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat or that, that manner. That's the spiritual meat. They call it spirit because it was, what, the shadow of what we're talking about tonight. And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Huh? That's what Jesus is telling. But watch this now. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, and they were overthrown in the wilderness. They all was eating the same spiritual meat. They were all drinking the same spiritual drink. But some of them God wasn't pleased with. You know why he wasn't pleased with them? Because they weren't walking the spiritual walk. They weren't walking in obedience. Okay. You eat it so you can learn how to walk it out. Learn how to live this thing. We can prepare to live in, in the new heavens and the new earth. But you got to learn it in the wilderness. Okay, now let's go back over here to, to John. Okay, um, where were we, John? 35, okay. 35 And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Amen. Look at verse 36. 
But I say unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. Or obey not. You're not doing what I'm saying. This is what he said. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. That's, how, that's the faith you have to understand. When you come to God by faith, he will never cast you out. Amen. And if he said, all that the Father's given will come. That's why I don't worry about it. Because if, if you belong to God, you're going to come get this man. <laughs> Amen. Or wherever the man is, you're going to go get it. Amen. My sheep know my voice. That's the other thing God was doing. I, I thought that's what I was going to deal with tonight. But he said, my sheep know my voice. A stranger, they will not follow. I'm going to preach a message one day. Stranger danger. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be screwed. You got to, you know, we teach our children about yeah. stranger danger. You uh -huh. got, pastors need to teach the sheep about stranger danger. Don't follow the strangers. We teach that one day. Amen. For his sheep know his voice. And he said, all that the Father gives me will come. And he that cometh, don't worry about the saints. You come weak, don't worry about it. He will not cast you out. He going to help you. He going to strengthen you. You just keep coming by faith, saying, God, help me. Feed me with this bread of life. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Till I'm full. Feed me till I walk right. Feed me till I talk right. Feed me until I can love right. That's what the, the bread comes to do, the bread of life. Feed me until I know how to treat my neighbor, until I know how to treat my husband, know how to treat my wife, know how to treat my children. Feed me until I know how to treat my enemy. To the verse 36, but I say unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and he that cometh unto me I will not in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. You know what I con my constant prayer is for the saints? Father, fill us with the knowledge of your will. Help us to be receptive. Cleanse us from our own will, our own desire, the desires of the flesh. See, that's how the devil leads you astray through your desires, your carnal fleshly desires. But what God comes to do is fill you with his spirit. I always pray. I say, fill me to death and so you can fill me to life. Amen. Because he fills you with his spirit and that spirit, the Bible said, is going to kill the flesh. But it brings the spirit to life. Amen. And so that's what you have to understand. That's why we, we, we constantly in the word. That's why we constantly in prayer. We resist the evil and choosing the good. So we can feed our spirit so that our inner man becomes stronger than our outer man. Amen. Okay. So he says, um, I didn't come down from heaven to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. In other words, I didn't come to do the will of the flesh, because remember what he said when the time to go to the cross, he said, if it's possible, what? Let this cup pass. That was the flesh. Not wanting to suffer. But then he said, nevertheless, not as I will, but thy will. In other place, he said, what shall I say? Save me for this, from this hour? But for this hour, he said, this is why I came, to give my life a ransom. Amen. And so we have to understand, you know, why we are here, what our purpose is. Not to do our own will, amen, but the will of him that sent us. Amen. Amen. Okay, look at verse 39. Okay, verse 39. And this is the, the Father's will 
which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing. That's the will of the Father. All that the Father has given me, he said, I should lose nothing. But should raise it up again at the last day. That's the will of the Father. Amen. And that's what he said. This is what I came to do. Amen. Raise it up at the last day. Verse 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Amen. All this is. Now, herein is another important point. It's important that we allow that old man to be put away. And why is that? Because people need to see Christ in you. See, remember, he said, all that seeth who? The Son. And believeth on him. People ain't gonna get saved as long as they see in you. Huh? But when you die and they start seeing the sun, mm -hmm. then that's the will of God. That's the will of God being done. That everyone that seeth the sun, believeth on him, should have everlasting life, and I should raise him up on the last day. So we're not even living our lives any longer just for ourselves. We're living it that people might see Christ in us yeah. and they might be saved. Look at verse 41. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. Why? Because they were carnal-minded. They didn't understand spiritual things. Amen. That was the whole problem. So what did Jesus say? Verse 42. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he said, I came down from heaven. <laughs> See, they didn't have a spiritual understanding. Amen. And, and you know, sometimes you got to understand when you're talking to folk, you may sometimes call them out of folk, you may as well be talking Chinese to them because yes. they don't understand. <laughs> but you don't get upset with them, you pray for them. Amen. Amen. That God will what? Open up their understanding. Okay? And that was the problem that they had. Yeah. In other words, because they just see you how. They just saw Jesus in the flesh. Say, okay, we know your father, we know your mama, we know your brothers. Okay. How is it that you saying you came down from heaven? Who, who are you making yourself? You know, some people, you, I'm telling you, <laughs> It, it, Jesus said, if they receive me, they'll receive you. But if they don't receive me, when you showing them me, see, they're going to, they seeing you. I know you since you was knee high to or whatever. I knew you when you was this, that, and the other thing. Okay. Because all they're looking at is you from a what? Calm perspective. You have to understand that. I really had to get the revelation because the, the Bible says that um, a prophet is not without honor save in his own country and among his own people. And sometimes we get offended we, you know, when we're not accepted and stuff like that. I'm like, I don't get offended because the Bible makes it clear. If they, if they call minded and you spiritual minded, of course they ain't going to understand. Okay. Amen. And so, um, the spiritual things don't make sense to call them out of the people. This is, what, this is what Jesus had to deal with the whole time he was on the earth. Right. So, what do you think we're going to deal with? Look at verse 43. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. 
I love this. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. So he's letting them know. Don't, don't trip. You can't come. And, and then sleep saints, this is why we ought to really feel special. Because the reason we were able to accept him when others couldn't is because he drew us by his spirit. He opened up our understanding so we could understand what others could. Not because we were so good, but because he just loved us like that. But it also should make us want to please him. Because he didn't have to do it. He used to sing the song. They don't do songs like they used to. But they used to sing a song and say, he didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it. But I'm so glad he did. Amen. And so he said, don't, don't murmur among yourself. No man can come except the Father which have sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Verse 45. It, it is written in the prophets, and ye, and they shall all be taught of God. Every man, therefore, that have heard and have heard, learned of the Father, what? Cometh unto me. Verse 46. Not that any man have seen the Father, Save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father, and he's talking about himself, the, the Son, or the Word of God. Because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and it was the Word that became the flesh. So that's what he's saying. Because no man, um, God told Moses, his friend, no man, no flesh can see my face and live. No man have seen it. One day we will. Because we believe on Christ. One day we're going to see him. Because we're going to be like him. Right now he said no man can see me and live. So he said no man has seen the Father. Save him that is of the Father. Verse 47. Verily, verily, I say unto you. He that believeth on me. Hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. He that believeth on me. He already. Don't do we already have everlasting life. You believe on him because you believe. Why? Because he said, I am that life. When you eat the bread, when you partake of the spirit, that's life. That's why you are able to overcome your sins and your iniquities because what? You are eating that bread of life. You got to get, that's why, that's why I, I, I put so much emphasis, so much stress on getting in the word, getting in prayer. Through the word, we get knowledge of God. We get that bread of life. Through prayer, we get that spirit so that we are able to actually do what we're reading. The spirit of God brings life to that word of God in you. And you find yourself, you know, and this is something that I'm learning and seeing more and more. As you Growing grace and in knowledge, a lot of stuff you don't have to worry about not doing. Because as you die to your old man, you ain't even gonna want to do it no more. The deader you get, you don't even want to do it. No more. Hmm. You lose your one of the problems. <laughs> get it now. One of the problems my wife is having right now. She needs to eat, but because of the chemo. Is messing up her taste buds. So food don't taste good anymore. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Even drinking water, they say, and I heard it from other people, it tastes like has a metallic taste to it. Now nobody wants to drink anything like that. Mm -hmm. So then what? They lose their what? Appetite. Well, we got to eat this bread of life. I call it, instead of chemotherapy, we got to get on some word therapy. Because <laughs> even after that sin, you cut out your life, you got to make sure it don't come back. Amen. You get on word therapy. But as you get on the word therapy, let me tell you something. Sin going to start tasting funny to you. Right. <laughs> it ain't going to taste the same. You ain't going to enjoy it like you used to. You see how important this word is in our life? This is what God is trying to tell us. This is what he was trying to tell them. Verse 49. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. 
This is the bread which came down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Verse 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Amen. And we know that he wasn't talking about what his physical flesh, eating his physical flesh. He was talking about eating his word. Drink, he wasn't talking about drinking his spiritual blood. He was talking about drinking what? Of the spirit. Just like the spirit is life to the body, so the, the spirit of God is life to our spirit. Listen to what he said. Verse 52. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? See, because they were still what? Carmine. Carmine. <laughs> Amen. i never forget, I had a young man when I was um, pastoring on Marin Street. He was Catholic. He had came in and listened to me teach and whatnot. And he was excited. He, he enjoyed the teaching. But he had a Catholic understanding of this passage of the scripture. Because they believe when they take what they call the Eucharist, we call it communion, they believe that that wafer is actually literally turned into the body of Christ. And that wine is literally turned into the blood of Christ. So they think they are literally drinking the blood and eating the body or the flesh. And that simply is not true. He said, this do as often as you do it in remembrance of me. It's just symbolic. Okay. It's symbolic. But what he's telling us here is we got to eat this word and we got to drink of this spirit. That's what he's trying to tell us. Look at verse 50. Let me, let me do 52 again. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Very, very, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Why? Because the flesh and the blood is life. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In Him was life, and the light, life was the light of men. So that's why I keep telling them, saying, you got to get in this Word. This is your life. You stop eating the Word on a daily basis, you, you feel it. <laughs> you feel it. Stop getting on in prayer, because through prayer, that's where you get grace. Look at, look at what he said. Let me read that again. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath an eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last. That is the third time he said that. He wanted us to get it. <laughs> it's all about what? That last day. Not about what's happening now. We are living to live again. Amen. We might lose, and eventually if we live long enough, we're going to lose everything we have down here. But don't lose the word. Amen. Because that's what's going to get us to them gates. Okay. Verse 55. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live 
by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. See how important the word of God is? Verse 59. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples when they had heard this said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Because they still thinking how carnally. They still thinking he talking about his physical flesh. And his physical blood. Because in the pagan religions, they eat human flesh and drink human blood. Verse 70, 61. Then Jesus, when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured it, he said unto them, Does this offend you, cause you to stumble? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth or that giveth life. The flesh, what? Profiteth nothing. And, and, and Barnum said it profiteth what? Little. But he said it profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he, and he said, Therefore I say unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. Now watch what happens after this one message. Remember, he just finished feeding 5,000 men. Now remember, he fed 5,000, that was just men, not including children and women. So he literally, what he really fed was, if you just put one woman with each man, one child with each, that was at least 15,000, probably more than that. That's a mega church. <laughs> but watch this. <laughs> watch what's about to happen to a mega church because of this one message. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Why? They were following him for the wrong reason. Remember that's what he said earlier? Mm -hmm. You seek me not because you saw the miracles, mm -hmm. but you seek him because you want some more fish and bread. Yeah. Huh? So when he told them, now you got to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, they couldn't deal with it because they were calling them. That's what happened to a lot of people in the church today. They can't deal with the spiritual teaching because they what? They're here for the wrong reason. They want you to get them all excited and they want you to promise them stuff, fish and hoes. But the only thing I'm telling you tonight, you got to eat it. You got to eat this word. You got to drink of the spirit. If you want to have life in you, if you want to be able to overcome, you must get in the word. There is no way around. Make sure you're following him for the right reason. From that time, verse 66, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, will ye go also go away? <laughs> In other words, Jesus said, what y'all going to do? Right. He didn't change the message. Exactly. He didn't change it in order to keep the good tithe payers and the choir members to make sure he had a full. He didn't change it. He just asked him, what y'all gonna do? Huh? Will you go also? Are you gonna leave too? 
God gave me a word one time. Right, watch what Peter said. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. See, they, was, they were there for the right reason. They were there for what? The word of life. Look at verse 69. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. God gave me a word from that. He said, if you believe, you can't leave. It was only the unbelievers that left because they were there for the wrong reason. But when you hear for the word of God, as long as this word is going forth, you can't leave because you want eternal life. See, I want eternal life. I don't want to, to, as some people say, live in hell down here, then die and go to hell. Right. Amen, because we about to go through some stuff. The Bible said the time is coming that is going to be in such a time of tribulation as it not been since the world began, nor ever shall be again. We ain't seen nothing yet. And I don't want to live through all that stuff and then die and spend eternity away from God. I'm here for this word. That's why I'm here. What keeps me here is Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Look at verse, we believe, not only do we believe, but we sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. They looked at, they saw the signs, the miracles, they knew the Old Testament, and they knew what the Bible said about him, and everything the Bible said in the Old Testament was true. And they were sure that this is the Christ. Because, but that wasn't the key reason. But because the Father had revealed it to him. What, what did he say? Um, uh, people were saying, um, Jesus asked the disciples, we're about to close, but he asked the disciples, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, is? Some were saying, some say you Elijah, because Elijah was supposed to come back. Then others say you are that prophet the one that Moses spoke of, and then the others said, you John the Baptist, come back to life. Mm -hmm. That's what Herod was saying. That's why the miracles were showing themselves in it, because he was John the Baptist coming back to life. But then Jesus turned it to the disciples and said, but who say ye that I am? <laughs> who do you say that I am? And then what did Peter say? And Peter was just speaking for the twelve. He said, thou art the son of God. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. But what did Jesus say? He said, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, son of Jonah, because flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. See, when you can understand that he is the Christ, yes. the Bible even said, Blessed are they that have not seen and yet believed. When you can believe that he's the son of Christ, even the son of God, even though you've never seen, you bless because the Father revealed it to you. <laughs> Look at verse 70. And Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Amen. We thank God for the word on time. Amen. Amen. Thank God that are joining by um, Facebook. I hope, because on my thing is frozen. I hope this ain't the case. I'll find out. But God bless everyone that is joined on um, Facebook on tonight. Amen. And have a blessed evening. We thank God for his word on tonight.